All right, this will be our last uh, video on skeleton physiology. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how bone forms and about how bone uh, repairs. So we're going to get into those two things. I'm going to do a little bit of a rundown of fractures as well. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about sort of how bone forms. Now, we've been talking about bone material, and I didn't really get into the material itself. So the matrix part of bone has this name. It's called hydroxyapatite. Um, that material is actually a salt. It's a mixture of calcium, but also this element phosphate. So those are the two main inorganic uh, elements that you find in your bones. We usually think of calcium, but phosphate is also important. Um, you also have a very small amount of fluoride in your bones and in your teeth as well. That helps stabilize it. So that's what the mineralized part of that. And, and as you can see here, about 65% of your bone mass is this mineralized material. Now, the other 35% is um, connective tissue that's not calcified. Uh, so things like collagen in particular, that protein is very, very important. So you have a mixture of this very hard matrix, this flexible but tough collagen, and that gives the bones a little bit of give to them. So the bones can actually flex a little bit. Um, and if you touch real bone, real bone is very uh, hard. It's very brittle. It breaks really easily. But when you have those organic um, collagen fibers in there, it helps to add some flexibility. So bone actually forms really early on. So at week eight of development, so in, during embryonic development, this is week eight after fertilization, that's when the skeleton starts to form. Um, it's not the first system. The first system that really starts to form is your nervous system and then your circulatory system, but your bones really follow that. Um, and your bones continue to form until you're about your mid twenties. So if you are 25, uh, or older, congratulations, your skeleton is done. If you are under 25, your skeleton is still developing. And usually the last thing to form, we haven't done this yet, but we will soon. So at the bottom of your rib cage, you have this little point called the xiphoid process. That's one of the last parts of the body to actually harden or ossify. So there's two kinds of, of ossification or bone formation that we're gonna talk about. The first is called intramembranous ossification. And this is generally used to make flat bones. So the way this works is this, an intramembranous ossification. So in this image, that white gray background is representing an embryonic connective tissue. So it's a flat sheet of connective tissue and it's got a bunch of collagen fibers. And there are these cells, they're called mesenchymal cells. Those are stem cells that can become pretty much any kind of connective tissue cell. And those mesenchymal cells would be told to become osteoblasts. Remember, osteoblasts build. So they're gonna secrete this osteoid material. And as they do that, they're going to start turning this flat sheet of connective tissue into bone. And eventually what you're going to see is this. You're going to see uh, a bone material on the outside. You're gonna have osteoblasts that are building it. Now, some of these osteoblasts get trapped when they get trapped by the bone matrix, they become, they, they mature, they become mature bone cells, they become osteocytes at that point. So that's how we get the osteocytes inside these flat bones. Now, as this bone continues to develop, what's going to happen is blood vessels will start forming around the bone. Those blood vessels inhibit bone formation. And so you get these spaces that become the spongy bone. Um, this part of the spongy bone is called the trabeculae, these little, uh, the, the, the hard parts that make up the spongy bone. And so that's how the spongy bone gets formed. So the spongy bone middle of that flat bone forms first, and then compact bone gets laid down on the outside. And that's how we get that spongy bone in the middle, compact bone on the outside, flat bone sandwich. Now, the other kind of ossification, it's called endochondral ossification. Now, chondral refers to cartilage. And so in endochondral ossification, we're going to take a structure that looks like a bone, but it's made of hyaline cartilage. And we're going to replace that hyaline cartilage with bone tissue. So the way it works is this. So this is, there's a whole bunch of steps here, and there's a lot of words on this. I just want you to focus down here on the images. So this bone, this structure represents 
um, early on in development, the skeleton. So this would be a long bone, and that's what we're going to form here is a long bone. This would be a long bone, but it's made out of cartilage, so it's not really a bone. The first thing we do is we actually form some compact bone on the outside of the diaphysis. This is what's known as a bone collar. So we lay down compact bone, and then spongy bone is formed in the middle of the diaphysis. And again, blood vessels form around this, and so we end up forming this medullary cavity. So we have the medullary cavity, we have some spongy bone, and then compact bone on the outside. We do the diaphysis first. Then the epiphyses are going to calcify, and they follow a, the same pattern. So we'll form this bone collar of compact bone on the outside of each end of the bone, each diaphysis, epiphysis, and then we form spongy bone in the middle. So when an infant is born, the ends of the long bone kind of look like this. So we have this uh, diaphysis that's bone, but still some cartilage, and the, the epiphysis here is very cartilaginous. So there's some bone here, but there's a lot of cartilage. Um, in fact, when babies are born, their bones are still forming, and so there's a lot of cartilage there. Now, having the structure is actually really helpful because if you want to lengthen the bone, that lengthening occurs here at this cartilage between the epiphysis and the diaphysis. This is called the epiphyseal cartilage. And so to grow, what will happen is this. This side of the epiphyseal cartilage will turn into bone, and then we'll add cartilage to this side. Um, or did I reverse that? I reversed that. So, sorry, this side we add bone, this side we add cartilage. So we'll shift this whole thing up. This In this process, we're going to lengthen the diaphysis part of the bone. So this growth, and this is what I want you to remember, the growth takes place at this epiphyseal plate. So if you see an x-ray, and I'll show you one right now, if you see an x-ray where you can see these epiphyseal plates, so for example, right here, if you look very closely, and I'll zoom in, here on this x-ray, ignore the fracture for a second, but you can see here is the epiphyseal plate. This is one of the, the phalanges. You can see this gap right here. That's the epiphyseal plate. It's made of cartilage, so it doesn't show up on the x-rays. So that's how these long bones lengthen. They do that through this, these epiphyseal plates. Now, the other thing that affects bone growth is mechanical stress. So you guys have probably been told it's a good idea to get up and move around and do exercise. And one of the benefits of this is when you put stress on a bone, it activates osteoblasts and they actually build bone where the bone is being stressed. So anytime you see a bump on the bone like this, Usually those bumps mean that a muscle is attached. If that muscle gets bigger, the bump gets bigger to accommodate the force that the muscle is putting on it. So actually adding mechanical forces to the bone is really important. It's actually one of the things that helps prevent this condition, osteoporosis. So osteoporosis or loss of bone mass. So this bone right here is normal. That's normal spongy bone. This is a bone that has osteoporosis. And so Mechanical forces help prevent this, and nutritionally, you guys probably know, it's calcium. Calcium consumption is also very important. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys is just a little bit about how fractures work um, and how they're repaired. I'm not going to ask you to identify fractures on x-rays. You may have to do that for other classes. I do want to talk a little bit about how fractures occur. In long bones, usually they occur in um, the diaphysis, because, and they usually occur it laterally because that's going to be the weakest part of the bone. Now in all cases bone repair works like this. The first thing that forms is a clot or hematoma. Over several weeks you get this thing called an internal callus. You get this fibrous connective tissue connecting the bones together and then over the next several weeks that cart that thing turns from uh, connective tissue into bone, we remodel it, and then anywhere from three to six months later, we've completely remodeled that bone. So we start with a hematoma, we form a fibrocartilaginous callus, we then form a bony callus, and then the bone is remodeled back to its original state.